Hi, I'm Murray Shaw from Bigger Bailey and I'm a planning partner here. Today I want to talk a little bit about large planning projects which often raise environmental issues. Um, many of you will be aware of the application by Donald Trump to build his golf course on a triple SI. The new Forth Bridge project is likely to raise uh, issues with bird life in the Firth of Forth. And just last week, the uh, local authority through an East Lothian said it was against Scottish Power's proposal to build a new power station at Kirkenzie. Over the last 10 or 15 years, environmental issues have become very much to the fore and the environment is protected quite correctly. There's also significant access to environmental information these days through things like the R House Convention. That provides that members of the public have an entitlement to obtain information and access to information about environmental projects. Part of the purpose in doing that is to allow them to challenge projects which may have an adverse impact upon the environment. The difficulty with that is court action in this area is very expensive. Going back to the example of the Trump application, there's a judicial review challenge there which is going through the courts in Scotland and we've only had the interim stages of that but the first hearing took some four days, a very expensive hearing. The EC have recently been very critical of the British government in permitting access to the courts for environmental matters. The Environmental Commissioner says specifically that the law requires that challenges should be affordable and the UK needs to address this problem and has threatened the European Court action against the British government if it fails to do so. However, in January of this year, there was an interesting case before the Scottish Courts involving a Mr McGuinty. Mr McGuinty wanted to challenge a proposal to build a new power station, which had been highlighted in the National Planning Framework. Mr McGuinty considered there had been insufficient consultation about that, and therefore wanted to take a judicial review application through the Scottish Courts. It was estimated that the cost of that for both parties would be about £180,000. Mr McGuinty had insufficient means to pursue the matter, so he sought what was called a protective costs order. It's the first time this had been granted in Scotland, though they have been granted in England. It was interesting because the Scottish Government really left the position to the, the judge, Lady Dorian, to decide. They didn't oppose the application on the merits. Having considered matters, she considered it was in the public interest that Mr McGuinty's costs should be capped. So he was told that he would not have to contribute more than £30,000 to the government's costs if he's unsuccessful, but equally there'd be a restriction on the sort of costs he could recover. Now that's the first case of its sort. I'm sure it won't be the last. I don't think it's a complete answer to what the European Commission is going on about. Britain will certainly have to do more. Though I do suspect the fact that the Scottish Government did not challenge Mr McGuinty on the principle is reflective of, of the concerns that exist. So a small step, but possibly an important step, in making challenges to significant planning cases more affordable to the man in the street, to use a cliché.